Your ticket, please. Oh, yeah. Oops. All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks very much indeed. This ticket allows me to travel from London to Glasgow, that's a distance of 400 miles, at an average speed of 80 miles an hour. Now that's 10 miles an hour faster than the legal maximum for cars on a motorway. And I can relax, read a book, or have a meal whilst I'm doing it. Right now, we're running at a steady 100 miles an hour. That bell tells the driver that it's all clear ahead. But that sign tells him to reduce to 70. The line curves quite sharply here, and if he carried on at the same speed, I'd soon know all about it. White, please. For a start, this coffee would probably end up on the floor. Most railway lines in Britain are far from straight. The main line between London and Glasgow has dozens of curves like this which slow the train down and make the journey that much longer than it would have been on a straight track. Well, of course, one answer to that problem would be to eliminate all these curves, to build an entirely new straight track, just as they did in Japan for the famous bullet train. But even if that were possible here in Britain, it would involve new cuttings, enormously long tunnels, and it would be prohibitively expensive. So the engineers began to look for an entirely new solution. Back in 1970 or thereabouts, they built a rather strange looking vehicle at the Railway Technical Centre in Derby. Now one of the odd things about it was that the actual body, the bit above the wheels, could be tilted sideways. The theory was that by making it do this when the vehicle was travelling fast around a curve, it would prevent things from being thrown about inside. Well, that was the theory. And it's been tried and tested in the new advanced passenger train, the APT. And that's what I'm on my way to join now. Very futuristic looking, isn't it? It's more like being on the flight deck of an aeroplane than a locomotive. The indicators here, this one's been around a long time, hasn't it? Yes. It's an automatic warning system. Uh -huh. That I've never seen before. What is that? Well, that's the new thing uh, called CAPT, C-A-P-T. And you can see it says maximum speed 125 miles per hour. What happens is the train moves along the track. Equipment on the track side throws up a signal and it's reflected in here in numbers showing the exact speed that the driver should be at that particular point on the track. So and it really instructs the driver how yeah. he should be driving the train? Yes, and he makes the necessary adjustments. Now, you've driven all sorts. You started off in steam. Yes. You were one of the first people ever to drive this train, yes. which is actually Scots, isn't it? This it's particular Scots one. Train, yes. How does it compare? Oh, there's no comparison. No comparison at all. Eh, the old steam days were romantic days, but they've gone and we, we're now into a new era. And eh, this is much, much better, much more comfortable, much more pleasurable. And eh, well, the steam had a, a soul, as a lot of people say. Eh, this has also got a soul, I think, and a great future. Is it exciting? That's just the word for exciting. All passengers travelling on a special intercity APT service, please collect their boarding passes at the APT kiosk. All passengers travelling on a special intercity APT service, please collect their boarding passes at the APT kiosk. Caught up with you at last. Hello, Peter. Hello, driver. Guard here. Two minutes to departure time. Right, William. Thank you. Two minutes to go, Andy. 
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is your God speaking. You are traveling on the Intercity APT from Glasgow to London, Houston. The train is now ready to depart. Will the passengers please stand clear of the doors? Thank you. Trip. Oh, it's tremendous. Oh, tremendous. I must say, when we started mm -hmm. off, because I was looking for it, I noticed every mm -hmm. time the train tilted, and they were tilting slightly at the moment, but yeah. I've actually forgotten about it. So explain to me again, why is it so necessary? Well, of course, the tilt is here only for the benefit of the passenger. You must realise that a conventional train can't go any faster through the curve simply because of the comfort of the passenger. Yeah. As you go through the curve, you're thrown to the outside of the curve by the motion of the train. Yeah. Now, APT gets around this by tilting the body of the train. It's a, it's a bit like riding a motorcycle fast around the bend. Exactly. That's yeah. it. But the same force is applied. You're going into the curves at a faster speed, so doesn't that put more wear and tear on the track? No. By careful design, APT is no harsher on the track at its higher speeds than our existing locomotives at their lower speeds. Indeed, in the straight, APT creates only half the force levels that a conventional train does. It's extraordinary. It sounds like very good news for the track builders, doesn't Indeed. it? Yeah. And, I mean, we're going pretty quick at the moment. About, about what? Oh, we're doing our maximum cruising speed of 125 miles per hour. But that's not the fastest the train will oh, go. Oh, no. Is. The train has, of course, uh, been up to a British speed record of 160 miles per hour during our test phase. I must say, Brian, that with all these new developments, it does sound to me like an extremely expensive project. You've got to remember, Peter, that we have a financial head start on this project by not having to build new tracks and install new signalling. Now, on top of this, APT is designed to uh, operate at a cost per seat mile no different to today's trains. So you won't be charging a supplement for people to travel on this train like you do on Continental ones? No, no. You've got to remember, of course, that the smooth shape of the APT produces a very uh, low running cost. Additionally, APT is a lightweight train. This means that to accelerate the train and to haul it up hills takes significantly less energy. Yes. On top of this, the train is an articulated train. This is where adjacent vehicles share a common bogey, and this leads to a lower drag or rolling resistance. You've already developed the high-speed train, the Intercity 125 diesel. Why do you need an APT? The reason is simple, Peter. APT is absolutely unique in its ability to operate through curves at significantly higher speeds than any other train can do. Now, this means that the APT can operate on the West Coast Main Line, which has a significant percentage of severe curves, uh, with journey time reductions which cannot be achieved with trains such as the HST. 
The same is true on other lines, such as the Midland Main Line, up to the uh, area such as Derby, Sheffield, Leicester, Nottingham, where with extended electrification, we could have the same economic benefits uh, from, from APT. An excellent breakfast in the most delightful surroundings. And this is the first time I've traveled on a train anywhere in the world at an average speed of approximately 100 miles an hour. But then again, this is the first time I've traveled on the APT. The conventional service from Glasgow to Euston is good. It's not a patch on this. It's smooth, it's quiet, and an altogether delightful experience. Everything that the developers and designers have told me the train should do it does appear to do and does it exceptionally well. I'll be in Euston a little over four hours after leaving Glasgow Central. And that's got to make this a train very much worth taking. Yeah. 